What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, a lot to discuss. All over the map this week. Yeah, it kind of is all over the map. There's some very interesting ones, and there's some ones that, where you always speculated, like, what was really going on behind the scenes. And they finally revealed some of what was going on. Before we get into it, um, there's been a lot of news lately regarding this book that Marvel put out. Um, the book is apparently like 150 bucks to get all the insides of how Marvel started and stuff like that. And that's you. And these little things are coming out, and there's some horrible ideas that, especially with the Russos, they sort of like, yo, we got, we're gonna do it this way or else we out. So that's a very interesting book. I, I don't know if I want to pay $150, <laughs> right? Is it worth that much, 150 bucks, to find out the secrets of how the Marvel Universe came to be? I don't know. But it's very interesting stuff. Um, a lot of things to discuss today regarding uh, the business of the superhero genre. Dune, which I saw. Took me like four hours to watch, but I finally got through it. Um, some more news about the Batman. Um, some some interesting news. Not interesting, but some um, a little bit of progress made in the Valzad uh, project that uh, Mr. Michael B. Jordan has going on. Um, and some other revelations regarding Aquaman. Batgirl, Ruby Rose, a whole bunch of other stuff, especially in Star Wars. Let's get into it. First up, Doom. Brian, I was very much looking forward to seeing this movie. I wasn't looking forward to it that much to go to the theaters. Um, but it had had it not been Praise Be Max, I probably would have gone to the theaters to go see it. I saw it. I must admit that, you know, I fell asleep a few times in the beginning. I had to go back. I watched it. There's, no, there's nothing that I skipped. As soon as I, I woke up, I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> we wind it so that I can catch what I missed. Um, and there were small increments of dozing off, but I, I got through it. And as I got through it, um, you know, I, I really enjoyed what I was watching visually, story-wise, um, although slow, but still not that it was boring or anything like that, but you know, you have to have had your coffee in order for you to stay, you know, stay through it. And I was pleasantly surprised, man. I liked this movie a lot. Um, again, visually it was, it was, it was beautiful. Um, special effects were top shelf. Um, it's like hard to see a movie that has decent CGI compared to this movie, right? And you, you, you start seeing like, oh, that looks fake compared because I'm telling you, if you ever saw Arrival, it's, it, this guy's visual effects are, 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 are well, well, well done. Brian, um, what did you think about this movie? Um, and did it, what sort of um, tomato score did it get? Was it like a 70 or 80? Uh, I believe by the time it hit the service, it was around 83 or 84 percent. And as okay. I had kind of commented on the previous show, a very polarizing 83 or 84. I think I mentioned to you, like the people who really liked it or some people who liked it were giving it very high scores, right? Like yeah, almost yeah. the highest possible mark. And then the people and then there was a pretty decent sized camp that was like, oh, this is like a, you know, one and a half star or three, wow. three out of ten. You know, so it. It's not, it's exactly what I expected it to be conceptually, which is incredibly well made. Like, yeah. whether you liked it or not, you do recognize like you're in the hands of a guy who knows what he's doing. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. he's giving you this world, this look, it's distinctive. You know, he loves the source material. Like, this is his, you know, this is his Bible of science fiction that he's always wanted to do. And it shows. I think you see yeah. it in the care in the shots. But yeah. it's not for everyone. Yeah. There's a ton of exposition. 
and you know this is a dense novel and he's trying to explain to you like why does spice matter like what are these houses and why is there these generational rivalry it's like you know game of thrones had how many seasons yeah. right so like you know in that context a two hour 45 minute movie is pretty short but it's yeah, that yeah. same idea of these families that have been across the galaxy for however long so it's slow it's slow like i mean yeah. I, you know you, it takes a lot to get into it yeah it did have more action than i thought like at the the set pieces were actually they had teased some in the trailer but i actually thought they held back some of the better um action like the night fight was not really something they showed in the trailer mm -hmm. but actually that was mm -hmm. pretty well done mm -hmm. um so the action there was there were some payoffs there uh, but it's also you know it's hard for me to give a full grade to this movie without seeing part two because this is not star wars this is yeah. more original star wars this is not original matrix like there's this movie is made with the assumption that there will be another part there's no yeah. end to this yeah. so you can't really assess the character arcs and the payoffs of everything that you've seen mm -hmm. so in that sense i'm like i enjoyed it as well i'm actually considering going to the theater to see, see it again, again only because mm -hmm. i do feel like some of the visuals and the sound I kind of want to see an IMAX. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that even though, like, it, it, yeah, I may need to take a bathroom break if I go see in the theater, but yeah. like, I kind of want to see some of these scenes now that I'm know what I'm looking for on the big screen. So I enjoyed it. Um, I feel like the number, the reception, the box office, everything on this kind of checks out to me. It doesn't mm. seem like it's wildly ahead of expectation. It doesn't seem like it's below expectation um so i don't know i mean is this a movie for you like did you leave like excited to see part two like will you see it just because it's there when no i definitely want to see how this ends okay okay so, yeah and the way it left off and um you know going to these YouTube channels to, to see the breakdown and what is to and, to, and to hear some of the, what will be with these characters. I want to see that, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so I, I'm, I'm looking for and, and, you know, and they, and it got greenlit for a second one. Um, yep. So, and, and it's supposed to come out in 2023. So I don't know if they shot some of it already or they're going to be on the move to get this done because it seems, I don't know how long it took to film this movie, but to get a release in 2023, I'm pretty sure they're going to get on the move on to get to, to, to start filming and get this going. So Denny Villeneuve told, he made an appearance, he told Christopher Nolan, the studio legit did not green light part two until they saw until he delivered box office for part one mm -hmm. and the budget was set a bit lower i think it's 150 so it's pretty big but like if you compare it to like you know nolan's up there at 250 for tenant yeah. and yeah, yeah. so forth he didn't get the same budget this is going to make money i mean i think it's already made about 230 250 worldwide it needs to get to about 300 it will get there so it will make money yeah um but you're right. He he has not shot material for the second one, uh, so it'll be. Although, I mean, he's. I think he's. It's written like he knows where the beats are and what the story is, but he hasn't shot it yet. So yeah, um, cast was good, but I would say like yeah, there's a several performing like Dave Batista, Zendaya, like. We have no really no idea like where they're. They really weren't in the movie that much, so it's kind of mm -hmm. hard to. To Oscar Isaac, I really like, by the way. Yeah, I yeah, thought he Oscar extracted Isaac. good stuff from Oscar yeah. Isaac. I, and I think Rebecca Ferguson's awesome in anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've said I'm pushing hard for her to be in the MCU in some capacity. <laughs> capacity yeah. Uh, you know, my least favorite performance, you want to guess? Least favorite. Or, yeah, the one that I felt like was the most predictable and I don't know. Didn't quite fit. I don't know who. Momoa. Oh. I mean, his performance was, I mean, 
is what you would expect of a performance from him. Right? Well, he's just it, Jason Momoa. Yeah, yeah. This is what you would expect. You know, his character from movies to movies don't change much. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, I mean, I thought it was fine for what he was there to do. Um, he wasn't. How would I say he wasn't. He wasn't uh, the Aquaman performance that he did there because that was. For me, it was pretty bad. It was always this constant trying to be funny situation. This, I think he's good when he's not trying to be funny and when he's playing a more serious role, I think he's good there. So I didn't mind his performance, but it wasn't, you know, the other uh, actors um, that, that that I think did their thing, as, such as Oscar Isaacs and David Tista. And I, and I didn't, it took me a while to recognize who that was? Um, Stellan Skarsgård. Yeah, the bad guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah he's yeah, in a yeah, lot yeah, of prosthetics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh snap, that's him. Yeah. Um, but um, I enjoyed the movie, man, and I'm looking forward to seeing Dune too and how this ends and what ends for this franchise because they're not going to do any more of these, right? Even oh. though there are more books of it, right? Yeah, but no, I, I think this also will be about as good as you can get for this yeah. material. Yeah. My, my point on Momo is more that if, if you rewind the clock all the way to when he did Conan, the remake of Conan like 10 years ago, if you take that plus Aquaman plus this, they're all kind of like the this, range yeah, is like this yeah. wide. <laughs> it's all kind of, you know, and that, and that was, and I felt like for this role, it was a little bit jarring to see him kind of grinning and, you know, messing with shallow i get it that they're friends but yeah his his tone just seemed to be different than the other character gotcha so now what did you I just, so timothy chalamet has sworn off superhero movies he actually is quoted in the he said in the promotion of this he was given that advice early in his career he's taking it he's never going to do a superhero movie would you want him to having seen him in this is a very different type of role for him than what he's done He's done more yeah. Oscar fare, and now he's doing that. Would you want to see him as a Marvel or DC character after watching this? I mean, I don't know what role or what character he would play, but I'm pretty sure whatever he did or what he was chosen for, he'd do a good job. Um, whether he wants to participate in the, the, the genre or not, I mean, if he does, great. If he doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't matter to me. No, I mean, right? he, he he clearly is trying to follow the DiCaprio model of, of like, from a young age, like, work yeah. with the best directors, yeah, prestige yeah. project, don't do sequels, don't do, I know this one will be two parts, but don't do comic book, don't do big, you know, kind of blockbuster stuff. Like, he clearly is doing that. Um, yeah. But I was curious, this is the first time we've ever seen him, like, in an action sci-fi setting as yeah. the guy, and I was... Yeah. I thought he was fine. I thought he played the character well. That's the thing is like Paul Atreides is not, you know, this swashbuckling hero. That's yeah, not yeah. the point of the character. So yeah. he's supposed to be kind of beta. But he will be in some action in the next film, though. Oh yeah. And I so... thought the duel at the end, he was he was fine. Like in the knife fight, he did a he did a decent job. He didn't look like he was out of you know, out of his league there. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of Dune. Um, did you guys go see it in the, in the theaters? Did you watch it on HBO Max? Let us know in the comment section below. Next up, man, and this is... Oh, what was very, your rating? What was your rating? Um, I, I, I think I'd give it a four. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of... I'm going to say three and a half, four, but yeah, I'm kind of there with you. That's, yeah, yeah. Yes, next up, um, this one is hard to... Uh, Fathom, because we've been waiting for this movie for some time, and we've been very excited to see it. It's coming out in approximately two weeks. Um, Eternals. Brian, we're not seeing very good uh, reviews for this film. Oh. I wonder, does it have to do with how different it is from the rest of the Marvel Universe? And I think 
the unfamiliarity of these characters, the way it was shot. I guess the cinematography, the fact that it was different or it is different from what you've seen in Marvel, I think is has thrown some people off and they're judging this movie based on that criteria of it being a Marvel film and this not being sort of a, a Marvel film or not feeling like it. What do you think about what some of these uh, critics have said about the movie? And does it bring down your expectation or excitement for seeing it um, in a couple of weeks? So short answer to your question is yes. It definitely is going to lower the bar. Um, I think so the as of we're taping, it's at 63% on Rotten Tomatoes. Thor The Dark World holds the dubious distinction of the lowest <laughs> scoring Marvel <laughs> film to date at 66. Mm -hmm. This is already below that. If you go below 60, Marvel would have its first ever Rotten rating in the MCU. And I got to be honest, I've raised to you this issue of great inflation post pandemic for these films. If you read the, the kind of the summaries and the taglines for these reviews, they're bad. Like, I know it says 63. These reviews read a lot worse than that. The scores I'm seeing are worse than that. And I would say the thing that scares me is there's a number of reviewers throwing around the B word, boring. And if there's one thing an MCU film has never been, it's, it's boring. boring. Yeah, yeah. So to see that over and over again, that worries me that at two hours and 40 minutes, it was this poor, like, was the editing, was they, they tried, did she try to tough stuff too much into this? Like, mm -hmm. I'm, let's put it this way. In the range of outcomes for this movie, the idea that it would be boring never crossed my mind. Polarizing, maybe. Boring, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. actually, I think, is a legit concern. Mm -hmm. And I guess to your point, I would have thought different would have been hailed mm -hmm. as an accomplishment for Marvel after the formula. And I am kind of afraid that if this movie winds up being far and away the worst reviewed and mm -hmm. the box office is disappointing, that Marvel will then retreat closer to the formula because they're going to say, look, we let, we let Chloe Zhao do what she wanted. We yeah. stood back and look what happened. You didn't like it. People didn't come out. We're going to tighten the reins again worries me yeah yeah um it wor it worries me in, in in how you put it that it might marvel might revert back to this formulaic um structure that they've built an empire around but i wonder if the Critics who've scored it poorly are not or never have not or have never read Marvel Comics and the Eternals and know who these characters are. <clears throat> A lot of the things that I've um, overheard regarding this movie as you know is there's a bit of mythology here. There's there's there's, there's covering you know, 7,000 plus years of the MCU and how it started and what will soon come to be. And I'm fascinated by that, right? Um, I think those people who are not familiar with the Eternals and the history yeah, we'll find it boring because there's not a lot happening, right? And they're not interested in this exposition or explanation of what will be coming in the near future regarding X-Men, Galactus, and whatever else is being presented 
um, for future references in this film. So me personally, I'm, ex I'm still excited for it. Uh, and I'm, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing it in two weeks and it'll be interesting that conversation that we will, that we'll have, um, when we see, we, we have seen the movie. But isn't, isn't what you're talking about, the responsibility of the filmmaker and the writer to balance making something that the fans of the material recognize and feel connected to but also is able to touch and introduce an audience not familiar with it. I mean, every great movie we have in the genre is able to straddle those two things effectively. So I don't think yeah. it's an excuse to say, well, if you're not a Marvel fan, you're going to find it boring. Like, I think, I think that lets Chloe Zhao off the hook if these reviews are accurate. Now, I, you may have a point in the sense of, have critics in a weird way, have the critics become too conditioned by the Marvel formula to when they yeah. sit down and they see the Marvel logo, it's now created this lane of expectation that when something tries to go outside of that, that they almost can't process it. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, we'll yeah, see yeah. if the audience score is much better than the, the critic score. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way this movie's been promoted, which I would say has been not, you know, brilliant, basically, up to this point. When I saw Boring appearing like five, six, seven times, I was like, wow. wow. They're talking about like, that, that's almost more damning than bad. Like, I, yeah. bad, I would almost, I don't want to say dismiss, but I'd be like, well, there's plenty of movies that I really like where critics did it. Mm -hmm. But to say like two hours and 40 minutes and people are like checking their watch and they don't really want to be there, like that's, you know that's what kind of as i said for me yeah. was as me concerning because they like yeah. i said two hours and 40 minutes i mean that's like avengers movie length you know yeah. they, that's not you know tight intro and, movie and, yeah and for avengers you'll sit there with no problem for three hours if you need yeah, that, ain't, that ain't gonna yeah. be boring yeah <laughs> so i'm almost contemplating if i should take my wife because i bought three tickets for my son myself and my wife i don't know if i should take my wife to go see this i don't know if she'll enjoy it I think I might just get AJ to come with me this time again to see. Cause I think we saw, I don't know what we saw. I forget what we saw, but we saw, uh, um, then what was the last Marvel film? Black Widow. Yes. I think we saw Black Widow together, but, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him up and say, we, cause I don't know. I don't think my wife is going to sit there for two and a half hours. I know what the hell is going on and what this all means, right? Um, she's not going to get the references. She's not. It could be boring to some people because they don't know what this means, what this event means, what these certain what 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 certain things uh, or dialogue that's had that references something that people don't know. It, it, it could be boring. So let's see, man. Two weeks. Fascinated. I'm, I'm now because of this. I'm fascinated to see what happens at the box office and and so forth. You know, because those expectations are clearly going to trend lower. Um, yeah. And this was, you know, I thought this was originally placed where it was in the year, so that it would kind of be like in the Academy Award buzz for the fall holiday season, and that doesn't sound like it's going to happen either. So no. I know it's. I, I'm I'm pretty interested to see the fallout from this. Uh, and, you know, Chloe Zhao has already said, like, I'd be happy to return for a sequel. And I was like, mm, I don't know about uh, that. We'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But uh, I, I'm going to say this. I think I may en enjoy Eternals more than Spider-Man No Way Home. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I think No Way Home is going to be a disappointment. I may be wrong. I don't want it to be a disappointment, but I think it's going to be a disappointment because of all the concerns that we've had in, in previous discussions. You can check that out. I'll probably put a, 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 a link in the description so you guys can check out that video about our concerns about Spider-Man No Way Home. I think it's just full of too many things happening for us to really enjoy. But let's see. It's a hot take right there, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but let's see. Let's see. Let us know in the comment section below. Are you guys... Uh, still looking forward to seeing the Eternals. Are you guys not going to go see this in the movie? Are you guys going to just wait? Uh, let us know in the comment section below. 
the Batman, the budget was was revealed for uh, the Batman. It came in at about a hundred million dollars, correct? Yeah. Not bad. And Warner Brothers, as of late, has done well with not um, putting too much in a budget for a film and making crazy amounts of money, a.k.a. The Joker. What else? What other movies that were low budget that made a gangbuster? Do you know? Uh, for them, Reese, for Warner Brothers specifically or just yeah. in general? For Warner, for, Bro- for Warner Brothers. Uh, Dunkirk was uh, 100 million. That made like... 550 600 so that's that's a strong that's a solid yeah. return um, yeah I, the, the first batman 89 it did it for, i was surprised 35 million dollars i mean i guess in 1989 dollars but yeah, 35 yeah, 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 yeah 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 considering that the domestic in 1989 was 250 if i remember off of 35 that, yeah. that works yeah yeah <laughs> so um, and I'm, I was surprised at a hundred million dollars because, I, well, not really. We haven't seen enough of the movie to really see if there was a lot of money involved in this, but so far from what we've seen, I guess you would automatically, um, go to a, a huge number because of how great this is that you, you're automatically going to think, oh, this must've cost a lot of money because this is how amazing this looks or whatever the case may be. Uh, it tells me that the cast was not that expensive, even though there's a lot of name actors in here. Mm-hmm. It tells me that they didn't take, like, I think we heard what Pattinson got 3 million bucks. That's the rumor. Okay. For this. Okay. But it, even though like every, you know, you kind of like, okay, like Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, like those are names, you know, Jeffrey Wright, Colin Farrell, but it feels like for the size of the part, maybe they took a discount or they're getting mm-hmm. it in back end points versus upfront salary possibly because it's just such an ensemble cast that you'd say at 100 million bucks how much of that's just going to the actors Production, like you would yeah, think yeah. a pretty good amount right but um listen i mean you know my other takeaway from this thing is gonna make a lot of profit oh hell a million dollar batman movie a <laughs> million dollar batman movie that's gonna be a billion dollars easy 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 i, mean, I, I know you I... were talking about bigger numbers but i'm saying mm-hmm. 100 million you make a but you know it's 100 yeah. million for marketing yeah this thing is gonna this thing could net a billion dollars yeah 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 quite possibly um and i think it's to- smart can i just say i think it's mm-hmm. smart even though it's batman i think it's smart and i made this point when when wb started throwing up all these projects on hbo max and then we had that quote before the merger came out but they mentioned this mid-budget, right? They threw the mid-budget phrase out there. Mm-hmm. I, I firmly believe like in this era where you have streaming and you have theatrical, the art of budgeting is just as important as the movie itself. Yeah. Like we are used to big round numbers, right? A billion dollars. Because we've mm-hmm. seen it with this genre. But not not everything's created equal. Yeah. Like Ant Man's been very successful because the budget's a lot lower. So yeah, at five hundred yeah. million, Ant Man makes in some ways just as much money as you know much bigger name superheroes. So the art of setting your cost and measuring your audience, you can make a lot of money if you play your cards right. Now we've seen yeah. notable failures, like we talked about, was a Jupiter's Legacy. Oh, there's God. an example where things went wrong, <laughs> right? And the money fell short. They didn't viewership was bad. They canceled. John the show. Carter. John Carter, great example. Great example of throwing a lot of money after something where there was no audience. Yeah. So you know, I see this and I'm like, you know, honestly, Batman is probably a layup. But if they're gonna if they're gonna run their ship like this, WB is gonna do a lot better in general. Of course, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Um, connected to this, you know, Zack Snyder has something to say, and I'll read his quote. <laughs> he says, um, this comes to us from Heroic Hollywood. I really loved the Batman trailer. I think Matt Reeves is doing a great job with it. It's right up my alley as far as the tone, uh, I'm sure, 
And I just <laughs> feel so super, super happy, super good. Listen. Would you be surprised if this was something that Zack Snyder did? Other than Matt Reeves, let's um, let's say this was Zack Snyder's The Batman. Would you would you think that he wasn't capable of doing a movie like this? Because tonally, yes, this this is right up his alley. I can, I, I see that, but as we said before, Zack Snyder's always had a problem with storytelling. And he just goes over the top. So for him to say that this is right up his alley in terms of tone, I, yeah, I can, I can see that. But in terms of um, the story, the performances, you know, I'd certainly be surprised that he would pull, be able to pull something off with this character this way. Because we've already seen what he's done with the Batman. Um, but yeah, what did you think of his comments? Yeah, say I, I wasn't surprised that he's excited for it. Like you said, it it looks dark, it looks brooding. That's definitely you know, and the color palette is definitely one that he would he would want to play in for sure. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of you know a highly emotionally conflicted Bruce Wayne, I think, is something that Zach you know relate not only related to but tried to portray in an older form with Affleck. I mean, that's something mm -hmm. he clearly was was trying to go for there. I think the comment is interesting because, you know, it seemed to points along the way as if like his, his legion of fans has, has not really embraced this film because mm -hmm. they wanted the Aflac Snyderverse version instead. And so I did think the comment was interesting along those lines that he kind of was, you know, bridging that gap for people and saying, no, it's okay. It's okay for you guys to like this too. Cause I like it. But where I think, I think if Zach was behind the camera for this exact same story, I think the main differences you would expect would be he's just much more maximalist when it comes to action. Yeah. So like when you see Batman fighting, Matt Reeves, we talked about it. He, he pans out. It's shot without slow-mo. Yeah. It's shot without at least what we've seen. It doesn't have the sort of right out of the pages of the comic hero pose and you know, all that sort of stuff. Where Zach loves that. I mean, it's one of Zach's strengths, I think, is, you know, he he pulls images directly from the comic lore, integrates them into the fight scenes and, and gives you those, you know, those individual frames where when you put them in a trailer, you just take the still photo. You're like, yeah. wow, that's a cool visual shot. But then that shot's going to have 10,000 CGI effects around. Mm. You know, that's what I mean. He's maximalist. He has to put more in the yeah. Film. And I think Matt Reeves is going sleeker. Matt Reeves is kind of, there's like a less is more argument sometimes that he's making in, in some of the shots. And that's where I think the main, the main difference is, yeah. um, you know, I, we commented on the lack of slow-mo, you know, like Snyder loves slow-mo. He lives yeah, in it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Man of Steel actually was the only movie he tried where he did sort of single cam. I don't believe there's a single slow motion shot. Oh no, there is one where he, where Kal was doing the Jesus pose before he goes, but I think that's it. And the action, the action is done at real speed. It's the only yeah, movie yeah. he ever did like that. Yeah. And and I, you know, maybe that was a, maybe that was a good choice. But anyway, yeah. So I, I'm not surprised he liked the tone. Um, but yeah. I, I wonder if his fans will now warm up to this more because he kind of has signed off on it. They'll come around. They'll go see. They're gonna go see it. It's, they're gonna FOMO into this movie. <laughs> <laughs> they are because everybody's gonna be talking about it. Everybody's gonna be, and and and, and they're gonna be sit there not being able to have a conversation with anybody without being in some sort of conflict <laughs> because they really have no real um, um, foundation to really have a, 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 a decent conversation as to why this differs. If you haven't gone to see the Batman, if you're, if you're, if you're that stubborn that you won't see it, you can't have a conversation with somebody that loves what Zack Snyder did. You can't. And I was the other before we move on. I was watching, um, I think Dawn of Justice, I believe, and it was the dream sequence. I was watching it, and then 
when Batman started like fighting and then shooting people and stuff, I, I just like that's it. You lost me there because it's it just it's just that it just looked weird to me seeing Batman using a gun and being John Wick with it. It just didn't didn't look good. So, but anyway, let's move on. Um, next up, Hayden Christensen is returning as Vader for Ashoka series. Brian, you texted me and you said, this makes me very excited. I'm more excited for the Obi-Wan series. No. This. But, okay, so I want to hear why are you so excited to see Hayden Christensen return as Vader for the Ahsoka series. What relationship does he have with Ashoka uh, or conflict that he that he has with her that makes you so excited? Because this is, at least on the surface, this is straight out of the Clone Wars. And this was the best part of the Clone Wars for my money. Um, you know, as far as animated fights and duels go, her her duel with him is as good as anything I think in, that the show put together. It's worth watching. It's like a couple you can find it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, like she's, it's basically he's at the peak of his powers in the in the, at this time period. She's mm -hmm. almost a match for him, but you can kind of tell like she's got to kind of outwit him and sort of outquick him a little bit mm -hmm. to keep up. Um, you know, spoiler alert, she, he kind of loses part of his mask and you see he's still got the he mostly human face. Like it's, it's done really wow. dramatically and she's kind of saving her friend. Like she's kind of saving her friends and allowing them to get away. Like while he's trying to use the force to stop them and stop her. It, this to me is like from the canon more so than what they're doing in the Kenobi series. Uh, you know, even though I, we know those two are linked in, in star Wars lore. This I think is when, when. I think I even mean, said it to you when they first broke the news that he was coming back. I said I would have been more excited right. if he was in this show. And so when I found out he is in this show, um, I think this is where I think when we look back, my prediction, my prediction is when both of these shows are up, you're going to like him more in this show than you will in the Kenobi show based upon what he's given to do and how important he is as her sort of foil um, in, in the series. So because because I do think it we did it does seem like he is gonna cross paths. We asked this question. It does seem like he's gonna cross paths with Obi Wan and the other series, and I'm a little bit nervous about it. But this his involvement in the Ahsoka series will it be a flashback or foes goes? Because this takes place after. Does the Ahsoka series take place after um, Return of the Jedi? Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, well, no. Uh, that the series take place. Yeah, that's a, a good question. Yeah, I don't know how they're gonna. That they haven't said. I don't think because obviously the in the in the cartoon it's before. Yes, it's before at New Hope yes. is when. Yeah, so I don't from know how I, they're figuring. Yeah, from what I've heard, um, this takes place after. I'm not, hundred percent sure. I think I'm on 80% sure that it takes place after and that most the more than likely he will appear as a force ghost. I don't know. That'd that's be a little bit of a bummer. Yeah. That, <laughs> if that's that, all he is. Because yeah. they need to show the two of them fighting. That is yeah. still one of the epic scenes. So if we get a flashback, then we may see it. Yeah, I hope. Uh, um so also Hayden Chris is supposed to show up in the Kenobi series. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that. But it seems to be that they will be dueling again. There's a, there's rumor that they will duel again. Mm -hmm. I started thinking about that, and there's one scene in the first movie, uh, A New Hope, where Vader says, I haven't felt this, or well, haven't sensed this presence since, and then he starts walking off. Mm -hmm. Could this be the moment that he's referring to? I'm guessing it has to be, and they're retconning this a little bit, because I yes. always interpreted that line as since Mustafar. Yes. 
And I think they're probably filling in that blank with whatever they're going to put in this yes. show. But yes. what leaked out was actually like a scene description of the fight. Okay. Or at least part of it. And it sounds like something like a rescue mission where Obi-Wan's going to break somebody out of a prison. And then that draws the attention of Vader who chases him down. And they, they kind of have like a mountainside duel or something. And he there's a reference to, I mean, we don't know if this is true or not, so I'm not spoiling anything. But rumors of like Obi-Wan force pushing him like a long way and, you know, some stuff like that that was pretty specific. That is going to be a movie event, my friend. Oh, listen, I mean, I can complain all I want about canon, but, like, if they're going to line up and do this again, like, yeah, yeah who's not watching? That? Yeah, that, that's going to be a, that's going to be an event uh, that everybody is, this, that's going to be talked about for, like, a week in the news and regular news. And that's, that's, that's what we're going to be talking about. But give um, it up for Hayden Christensen, though. I mean, yeah. I don't think there's a lot of people in Hollywood that would go through what he went through after he had he a bad run part. <laughs> and then like, well, but like 15 years later, it'd be one thing if he did like a 10 second cameo and like a wink and a wave, he was like, F this, I'm going in both feet, blasters, firing lightsaber out. I'll do all of I'll going to do these shows full out. I mean, I give it up. Like he, he obviously yeah. thinks he can do something to, you know, change his legacy, I guess, in, in, in the role. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I've, I'm looking forward to this uh, show and the Shoka series. I didn't know I was looking forward to the Shoka series even before the announcement that Vader might is going to be in this as well. So it's going to. I'm telling you, Disney's doing a lot, and they're giving us content um, that where everybody's going to be excited to watch on a week to week basis. Is it? I mean, I actually pound for pound. Star Wars is really making a run, I feel like, at the MCU on the streaming service. Oh, yeah. Uh, just, a, just a good feeling. Like, if you take the, you know, Mandalorian, if we buy into Robert Rodriguez's hype for Book of Fett, and then you take these two shows plus the Cassian Andor show, I mean, it could be, they could be up there. Like, that could be up there with, anything that marvel's got going on oh yeah not that they're really in competition but just this yeah. idea of star wars on the small screen yeah. disney might have cracked the code on this oh yeah definitely definitely i think a lot of it has to do with the newness of star wars and the rejuvenation of star wars uh, more so than to get into the weeds with the mcu world right um there's so many stories that can be told in Star Wars, and and uh, and you have people behind that franchise that really love and are going to do as much as they can to really restore its uh, excitement that people had over Star Wars. Uh, and I don't care what nobody says. The disappointment that we got with that trilogy, that god awful th trilogy. Um, they they they're doing something that to get people excited for that franchise again and so yeah uh disney plus the shows are really uh something that people really look forward to and they and they started off really well with the mandalorian and let's see what the book of fed has to offer because they're talking big game with this show so and i expect it to be i expect it to be uh what they've, what Robert Rodriguez has been talking um, about with regards to how well this show is going to be received and and how excited he is for everyone to see it, I think is going to live up to that. I, I, I'm I'm guessing that that'll be the case. I am, although I I mean, if you if you had me lay odds, I think one of Kenobi or Ashoka is going to be better than Book of Fett. That's just my opinion. I think because part of me feels like. Book of Fed is a little more of a ground-bound series by its very nature, right? He's mm -hmm. sort of back on Tatooine. He's kind of dealing with the huts. It's more of like a crime show almost. That's what I'm expecting. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, the Obi-Wan series, like even when this thing leaked out about the duel, it fed into this thing that I thought made a lot of sense was this idea of the running chase through space, right? This idea that he's got to stay a step ahead of Vader. He's got to stay a step because he's trying to hide and trying to hide the secret of the twins. Yes, and so yes. the pacing of that yes. is it lends itself to, 
you know, something that I think Star Wars needs, which is like, mm-hmm. you, you've got to battle in space. You've got to go up there. You know, we yeah. talk about space as being expensive and getting shows canceled, but this is the one <laughs> universe where space is its greatest strength, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think between these two shows, I think you're, you're going to be back to that even before you get to Rogue Squadron on the big screen. So Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Vader's return. And are you looking forward to his uh, appearance more in Ashoka or in the Kenobi series? Let us know in the comment section below. Doctor Strange. Benedict Cumberbatch confirms that they're doing reshoots. Uh, Brian, what do you? Why do you think that is? Why? Why do you think they're going back to doing um, reshoots uh, for this film? Um, does it have anything to do with Spider Man? What are, What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, you know, I think it's become pretty standard practice for uh, for big, really big budget films in this genre to do pickup shots. Um, he didn't say how many of the cast members would actually be a part of it, so it could be small, could be not small. It also could be, you know, don't forget, this is a movie which started out as a Scott Derrickson movie. He directed the first one. Sam Raimi came in and took over. So there could be some, you know, some Raimi touches where he's kind of like, look, like I want to, you know, I came in late. Now I got a better feel. I want to go back and put yeah. a few things up. And and you're right. There also could be the factor of now that WandaVision's on the board and, you know, whatever's going to happen in No Way Home or like what like some other things that they want to connect yeah, sure. I mean, it could be a little bit of that as well. I, as I said, I don't ever read into these for these type of movies as like, oh no, this thing is off the rails and going yeah. down. That's it's become pretty standard for this stuff. Yeah, I think Doctor Strange two is going to be hopefully um, the movie in terms of because obviously you get people that see it first and they get. I hope hopefully they're not bad reviews, but if they're good, this is one of those movies that I've been heavily anticipating, and most people are. Because you get to see, I guess, what happens after Loki and what Doctor Strange has to deal with. Um, You get to see more of Wanda and what happens after her show. So there's a lot to look forward to in this film. I don't think whatever happens in this film gets resolved um, immediately. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let us know in the conversation below um, if you are excited for Doctor Strange 2. Next up, this came out of nowhere. I don't understand it, really. I, I started theorizing about who this character may be. Um, but Bill Murray is in Ant-Man as a secret character no one knows what he who he has been casted as do you think this is a important role brian do you think this is just a cameo i was thinking the one above all oh yeah is the one one above all yeah 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 that's what i was thinking interesting interesting i so i have not seen a rumor about who he's playing he yeah he dropped this he was out promoting i think wes anderson's new film and he 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 said it, and then it was like a Molina moment. He kind of like said it, and he was like, "Oh!" And then he was like, oh, and "Then he was like, you know, he's Bill Murray." So he's like, "Ah, oh, like yeah, it's screw that. I'm just going to talk about it. you know." Like then he kind of went into it. I, I don't think he's so his comments. His comments would indicate he was on the set for more than a day, okay. because he he said. He's like, I can now say I have had the experience of what it's like to film a Marvel movie. And I kind of feel like if you showed up for a couple hours, I don't know that you would make a statement. Get that feeling, yeah, yeah. So it felt like he had a role. But he then added, not an experience I would like to do again. So whatever he's doing, I don't think it's going to be connected necessarily to a multi-picture. Yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting is a very interesting choice for Bill Moore, Bill Murray. Um, but let's see. I'm assuming. Ru- I'm, so the other the, the reason. So the reasons he said he apparently is a big Peyton Reed fan, uh, who's okay. the director, and that was part of the reason he agreed to say yes. And I'm assuming. I mean, 
I've never heard Paul Rudd talk about whether Bill Murray's his one of his idols or not, but I assume generationally he he could and would be for a comic like Rudd at Rudd's age that he would look at Bill Murray as like one of the OGs for him. So I wonder if there's a little bit of those two guys were like, please, can you can you do this? And you know, would you would you do this for us? And you know, he's probably at that point in his career where he's like, yeah, sure, I, I can I can I can do that. So, um, but. Yeah, look, I mean, <laughs> it's a little thing, but mm-hmm. Ant-Man 3, as we continue to talk about, like, they find ways to make it more interesting. Kang is obviously much more meaningful yeah. in the grand scheme of things than Bill Murray, but, like, you know, you throw Bill Murray in a comic book movie, it's at least worth you know, talking <laughs> yeah. about, right? We're curious to see what that is. Ant-Man is going to make a hell of a lot more money yeah. than his predecessors ha- have done, so I I, I, this, this movie is going to be very, very interesting because we get to see this other variant of Kang. So there's a lot of things to look forward to in this film. Uh, so let us know in the comic section below what you, who do you think Bill Murray is playing? It may be something, uh, some random thing, and he's just there to provide some comic relief or whatever. But it would certainly be interesting to see his performance in that in that world. Um, next up. I want to sort of skip over that our next topic and, and include it in the following topics after that. But this one is very interesting. Spider-Man, director of Spider-Man, uh, John Watts, has said that this will be Spider-Man Endgame. This will be this will be the end game for Spider-Man. Meaning it's gonna be on that tier of what we got in Avengers Endgame. This is Spider-Man. Listen, the more and more that they talk about this being, the less and less it makes me more confident in saying what I said earlier, Brian. (laughs) This movie is going to be whack. Everybody is going to think, everybody's thinking that this movie is like, oh my God. And the way they build this movie up is just like... uh, I think it's going to be horrible, man. I think it's going to be real. I think it's going to be oh. horrible. If people are going to go. It's going to make money. Guaranteed it's going to make money. But it's going to be it's going to make Suicide the first Suicide Squad the first is going to be bad film but it makes a lot of money. That's what I think. <laughs> oh it's going to be Transformers uh, the what was it? Nightfall or something like? I forgot. Forget what it was called. The last night. <laughs> the last night. I think it's gonna be a bad movie, man. Everybody, the wow. way these people be, wow. are talking about this film, I think it's gonna be horrible, man. What do you think? I can't. I can't follow that. That's. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. So you hey. know what? Wait, so you, you, I mean, Suicide Squad. I think was like twenty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and it made <laughs> seven hundred or eight hundred million. Eight hundred million dollars. Yeah. Oh, so you're basically saying that the you're saying that this one is basically telling the Sam Raimi Spider Man three hold my beer. That's basically <laughs> what you're saying. How much money did that movie make? A lot. Right. No. So the funny thing about that was they, you know, it was the classic like the budget got bigger and bigger. Because the picture was getting more crowded, and like the opening weekend was still mega. I don't know if it broke the record at the time, but it was huge. Yeah. But the drop off then was precipitous because the movie yeah, wasn't yeah. that good. Yeah, yeah. And people didn't. People just didn't like what they were seeing. But um, I don't think it's gonna be that. You think it's gonna be that bad? Deja vu. Yeah, I think Kevin Feige oh. setting them up to fail because they oh. know. They know that this is the end. Tom Holland is going over to Sony. Even Tom Holland is saying he's saying he's taking a break because Sony's gonna do their Spider Verse, and we're gonna see everybody but Spider Man in these films. And I just think Kevin is done with, with, with. He's doing what he can to help Sony because they've helped them. They they let Spider Man be a part of the MCU, and now Kevin Feige's like, let me help you guys out and. And I don't think this movie is going to succeed. And then we'll probably get a few movies that are good, but I, I don't think I don't think the Spider Verse is sustainable from Sony's part. They can try. They can certainly try. Can it be done? Yes, it can. But I just don't think it'll last. 
And it was there was um one comment I was watching the John Campion show and and they made a reference to the, the title No Way Home. This is you know oh goodbye to Tom Holland Spider-Man and and into the Sony world and it's not coming back until um I guess the next time we see Spider-Man in the MCU will be the the the, the title be Welcome Home. So let's see. Let's see. I mean, I guess I like the idea that they're concluding something. Like, yeah. you know, I, I do, I like the idea that within these serialized stories, that even like as the comics do, you reach the end of the arc. It's never totally finished. There's always the threads of the next thing, but, yeah. but you resolve some of the plot points that you've started in Homecoming. So, you know, I, I think that's fine to promote. Um, we obviously know the Tom Holland contract situation and and that's that's part of this too. And and we've talked yeah. about like this is a character, you know, more so than some of the other ones that 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 we see on screen that age matters. Like you know, you this is not a character where you can do the, you know, Bruce Wayne at 25 and Bruce Wayne at 65 and Bruce Wayne at 45 like Peter Parker's never really shown as that on any sustainable way in the comics. So no. any good actor that you find, like a Tom Holland, eventually reaches an age where it's sort of impractical for him to continue to be Peter Parker. And so, mm. you know, I, Holland's a pretty youthful looking guy, but like he doesn't look as young as he did in Homecoming and doesn't yeah. look as young as he did in Civil War. So I don't know how many, how much, how many more of these he, they'd want him to do anyway. Just before but, I, wanna... but I would expect the Spider-Man to be a little bit, older now you know at some point i want to see a you know a, a peter parker that's working he's doing this photography thing and you know he's a much older guy in the in the the animated series he was a man <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't he didn't look like no kid you know yeah. even though they made it seem like he was at some point i think he was in high school i don't know if he was in high school i think he was just a photographer he's a full-blown photographer he looked like a you know a grown-ass dude so at some point, we'll, I, I, I would assume that we'll get to see that. But I just, something just popped into my head. Timothy Chalamet. Robin. Yeah, I've seen that. People have said that. Yeah. Because he, he looks like, he looks like He'd be perfect. It. If you put the black mask over, he looks just like the young, like a younger, the younger drawing of. of yes. Robin. He'd be perfect. He'd be perfect. You know, um, look, we have the same concerns about this movie, right? Which is the the clutter. It's the you're trying to put two or three movies worth into into one film because you've got to go big. You feel like you've got to go bigger, which has almost never worked in, yeah. in, in the genre. Yeah, I can't get to where you are in terms of this being like horrible. Like I, I, I think the downside is more limited than that. But I hear you in the sense of I think you know their version of the Sinister Six, which he seems set to square off against, I think there definitely could be, you could definitely walk out of this movie feeling like, man, you fired that shot and we kind of, it kind of wasn't ready to be executed, if that makes sense. And I know Sony's going to try again on their side, but um, it would be a shame to get, you know, Defoe and Molina and, you know, McGuire and Garvey, all these guys back and then kind of feel like, man, like, you had all of them on the same set and you kind of left, left something on the table. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I can't, you know, if you ask me like what, what, if I had to guess sight unseen, I would guess that it's, I mean, it's not going to be 26%. I could, I would guess it's probably going to be between 60, 60 and 70 per 75, somewhere around there. That'd be, you know, and like, and like you said, it's a layup for the box office. I think this is probably, you know, if this is probably your first surefire billion dollar film worldwide, um, mm. even if it, if, even if it isn't, it, yeah. you know, top shelf, but, but man, you're, that's a, you're, a, I'll tell you what, I'll give it up for you. If it, if it is 26%, <laughs> I mean, I was just going to like play on loop. Pablo yeah, tells man. you <laughs> Spider-Man, no that, way it'll home. It'll be my greatest Horrible. moment. <laughs> it'll be my greatest moment. Listen, let me just put it into perspective in terms of uh, my horribleness comment. 
the way they're hyping this movie and the way how people are hyped and excited for this movie, I think they're going to be greatly disappointed in what we see. I just don't think it's going to be good because of all the things that are happening in this film and how easy that I mean, like this whole multiverse, I get it. But they're trying to, it seems to me like they're making these things happen so quickly and so nonchalantly. And, 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 and I just don't think it's going to be well received. And I don't think they're going to pull it off as because Sinister Six should be an event that spans multiple movies. They're making it happen in one joint. I just don't think most people will buy into it. I think the 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 die hard fans are just gonna eat it up, but I think most won't. That's what that's 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 what I'm foreseeing. Let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of that. Do you think this movie is gonna be all it has been said about what it will be in terms of the best thing and Tom Holland saying we've filmed one of the greatest action uh, sequences that's ever been done on film, all this other stuff. Let's see, man. I doubt all that. You know, I doubt all that. What's the, just out of curiosity, because mm -hmm. I think your know, expectations, you're right. I mean, this thing is definitely going to be off the charts for that. What's the last time you were completely, completely fooled by a movie like you went in and you were like my expectations are off the charts it's man no steel. way this is gonna be bad what man of steel see that's what you think okay yeah you don't like that movie that's why i like it better than i you, I, I it was okay but my ex i was high yo that oh, you trailer. thought it was gonna be a 10 out of 10 when you oh, walked yeah. in when you sat oh, down yeah. oh yeah okay. oh yeah that trailer had me Thinking about it all the time. I was watching that trailer over and over again. And then it was just, uh, I felt, felt weird after I came out of the movie theater. Like, what, 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 who was that? You know, you know, it, it just didn't feel right. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the controversial comments that I've just made. <laughs> um, next up, Val Zod. Michael B. Jordan's uh, project on HBO Max has found its writers. Um, so obviously things are picking up. Um, obviously they didn't have this ready for comic um, fandom. Um, but all I can say is that uh, I don't know who, where these writers are from. Do you know who, who are these writers and what they've done in the past? So they don't have a, a lot to their name. I would say that the biggest credit they have is an upcoming credit and you know it's probably going to make you cringe a little bit but they they are the writers of the new transformers movie the uh, rise of the beasts which is being directed by the guy who directed creed 2 uh, so a little okay. bit of a little bit of a michael b jordan connection there um they have sold another script too which was supposedly like a high profile project i don't know what that is or if it has if it's been released yet but yeah not this is not like hey there's 10 films or, you know, TV shows to look at. This is definitely a little bit sight unseen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, in my point, from my point of view, I, I just think, you know, Michael B. Jordan is setting out to do something um, that people are going to look forward to seeing because it's taken from the comics. A it's taken from a, 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 from a character from the comics, you know, uh, Val Zod. I, I didn't know too much about it, but a lot of um, comic book fans do know of, of the character. And I think they're going to be looking forward to see this story and how it plays out. On the other hand, J.J. Abrams, that's going to be a... You think my comments about Spider-Man Endgame and this movie being horrible was controversial? This is going to be controversial. This is by far going to be way more controversial. I don't know how 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 this is going to that movie is going to be received, but for for Michael B. Jordan's project, Val's out. I, I am definitely certainly looking forward to. If they both happen, I'm still not convinced they both happen. Yeah, I don't know if the J.J. Abrams thing is going to happen. I mean, just to, just to say, listen, 
I had said a long time ago that um, Ava DuVernay's New Gods wasn't going to happen. I was saying that from a long time ago, that that movie is not going to happen. And then if, and it didn't happen. Why? Because of the mess that the, the mess of WB. How is she going to do a film when you got Zack Snyder fans and all people throwing their hands up in the air um, in, 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 in um, disagreement with them not pursuing a, or furthering along the storyline of his world? How, why would she want to do, put herself in that position to do something like that, right? It got as far as writers and nothing happened. So I, I think that J.J. Abrams, we have a writer in Tanahashi Coast, but I don't think it happens. I, I just don't think it will happen. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Valzad project finding his writers. And are you guys looking forward to seeing um, what that story will be? Um, so it turned out that the trench... That when it was rumored, I was like, are you out of your damn mind? The trench, like, who is asking for that? Absolutely nobody, except for, um, what's the guy's, um, Juan? James Juan? Yeah. Nobody was asking for that movie. And it turned out that it was going to be a, a Black Manta movie. I'm sorry. I care nothing of that character, Black Manta. You know, if you're going to do a villain, if you're going to go the route of the Joker, there are other characters whom we've mentioned that I would much rather see. Mr. Freeze, for example. Bane would be something very interesting to watch. And perhaps others. But Black Manta, I even, you know, I, he's cool in Young Justice. He's cool in, 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 in Justice League Unlimited. But he's cool for the moment that he's in there. And that's yeah. it. I don't really want to know too much more about it. Yeah. Brian, what, are you, what were your thoughts when you heard that? It seemed a little, I mean, the whole thing seemed weird. It was like. Why the cover story? What do you? Yeah. Right, like, you know the. Um, I always think back to remember when they went through the whole bait and switch around Benedict Cumberbatch playing Khan or not playing Khan and yeah. Star Trek Into Darkness and you and it, and it really hurt in the end, right? When he, when he you found out it really was him, and then you're like, oh come on, man, you played with us through all this stuff. This had a little bit of that in the sense it was like. Why do you need to disguise a Black Manta movie? Is that some, is that some highly classified? Is that G fourteen classified? Like what? what? <laughs> really? Like is that the, if we find that out, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, it's like if you were trying to disguise like a Superman movie under something else, you know, like a, like a top shelf character that or somebody that had never been done. You know, um, yeah. that's not a good example. Yeah. But okay. And you don't want the hype to get out, so you just want to kind of cast and write and be kind of off the radar. Fine. Mm -hmm. Like, Black Manta movie? Like, you can publicize that. Nobody's going to... I mean, first, it's a little weird that you would do that before the first... Yeah. Basically, before the first Aquaman movie had even <laughs> broken a billion, that you're like, hey, I'm going to spin off the secondary villain. Yeah. Um, and look, I mean, Yaya's great, right? He's, he's, he's gone on to blow up as an actor, but, you know, it's like you said, I... You know, as I said, this is the this is the it's the, it's the Boba Fett challenge, right? It's it's like the character that's fun and everyone likes, but it's on screen for five or ten minutes. It's, you know, the, the guy that you bring off the bench, right? He hits a couple of threes. He's great at that. You go pay him two hundred million dollars to anchor your be your franchise player. They don't always work out, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's kind you're of not what signing Robert Orry to be the lead of your team. No, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. it, it, that, that's it's like a Black Manta movie without Aquaman. Sure. Like, what, what, where are we? What are yeah. we doing? Here? Right. Like, yeah. what are we doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if thank God I don't I don't work there, man. If so, they would have came up to me, what do you think about Black what, Black Manta? Are you kidding me? Hell no. Hell no. 
It's like, no. I mean, he did his appearance in, in Aquaman wasn't even that great. I think they underutilized him tremendously. And now they're going to be using him a lot more in this second film. But let's see what it is. But I don't think we get an Aquaman 3 after this. Yeah, I mean, well, I still I still think we will. But like, I, you know, I, there are very few villains. Well, you know, I shouldn't say that. I mean, Sony's going to test this. I think there are very few villains that can stand alone. I mean, I, you know, the Joker movie, just because Joker pulled it off and pulled it off in the way they did, that is not a green light yeah. to be like, cool, let's, let's forget the heroes and go to the villains and give them solo films. Like, balance, guys. Like, that's part of, you know, that's part of what makes it work. It's like, I was trying, I actually started thinking, when I saw that, I started thinking about like, okay, you know, you mentioned some of the Batman rogues gallery, which are clearly the ones that have the best chance. I mean, they're mm. going to try it with Penguin. You know, you mentioned, you know, Mr. Freeze. You know, there's probably a world where a Ra's al Ghul, League of Shadows, you could do something ninja related there that might be watchable. You know, the only other one I could sort of popped in my head was like Lex Luthor. I actually, if done right, if you made a Lex series, might mm -hmm. be interesting. Like, I might watch that with the right actor. Yeah. But how, so do you do that? But, but, well, how do you do those movies? without its main guy you know point is they can only work if the end point and the end game is then the introduction of yes. their arch rival yes but you know, the reason why the lex Luthor thing popped into my head though was actually because of cobra kai because cobra kai basically is from johnny lawrence's perspective and it works yeah and Ralph Macchio in the quasi Superman role of that series, it, it, it really adds like a nice spin to it. So that's what got me thinking. If you did a from Lex's perspective, because he he legit thinks he's doing good most of the time, <laughs> yeah. and then you made Superman be like kind of the the good guy, but sort of the opposite. Yeah, that that would work. But you do need Superman. You can't yeah. go very far. You know, eventually he's got to pop up. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let us know in the comment section below where if, if Black Manta was announced, is this movie something that you would be going crazy over? Let us know in the comment section below. I doubt that very seriously. Well, WB is keeping the budgets tight, so I don't know. What do you think? 50 million? 30 million? What do you want to set the budget for this? I, I, yeah, I mean, Black Manta. Batman's getting cost, 100. If Batman's Black, getting 100. Black Manta would have to cost more than around 80 to 100. Why? Because Black Manta lives in the sea. He's not chilling on land too much. And he's worried. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it, this is this it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let us know in the comments below what you guys think. A Batgirl casts Brendan. Brendan Fraser has been coming back. Yeah, he's doing work. Um, he's in Doom Patrol. Yep. Um, which I start, which I watched the first season, and then I think I didn't finish the season because it just got too weird for me. Um, but there's some incredible performances in that, in the, on that show. You should definitely check it out. Um, and now he's been cast as Firefly, or has he? Or there's a report or, that he's not. Really. What what are uh, there any uh, guesses as to who he could be? Oh yeah, so this story this story is great because it hit confirming he was cast as the villain. The initial reports were it was Firefly, costumed villain. Came out actually a couple hours ago, I think, before we taped. Actually playing Carmine Falcone. That's the report, and he was not the first choice for the part. Interesting. You know who the first choice was? Who? Sylvester Stallone. He said no. Good move. Good move, Sylvester. Carmine Falcone and Carmine Falcone is being played by someone else in the Batman, correct? Uh, yes. Correct. Okay. All right. All right. Again, I none mean, of this confirmed, but this yeah. came out today that. That's interesting to me because we get to see 
Brendan Fraser in a, in a more serious role and not the, you know, goofy character. But again, you know how I feel about these Batman related characters having their own thing and Batman is not around. Apparently he's supposed to be around or he might show up and who don't know who knows what Batman we're gonna see. I just don't care, man, for these things anymore. You know, it's like after watching the Batman trailers and it's, it, why would you care about anything else? Did you what did you make of the the, the director's response about Batman in this series? What did he say? So they said so they asked them and they said they were kind of cryptic, but they were like, no, he like they said it's Batman in the series, and they said the real Batman. Who's the real Batman? So they imply Batman is maybe around in this world or in the series, but it got people. T- it got people want like who? Do, who were they talking about? And it was kind of tongue in cheek because they they said it right around the time where the Flashpoint stuff was like coming out. So it was like, mm-hmm. you know, like, all right. So Keaton, Affleck, right? We know they're around. We know Pattinson. We. It seems pretty safe. It's not Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Because J.K. Simmons is the commission. Correct. You think there's any chance of Affleck? No. Um, Affleck makes a more sense, but listen. I, is, I don't care because <laughs> I... I, I, I don't know what they're going to do. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I just I just really have no interest in seeing this. I'm going to see it just so I can have my say and have my opinion. But I am going to go there like I'm going to a, a tuba recital. Because I have to go. If my son is in it, I have to go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to look forward to it. Um, I'm going to see it. I just don't really care. You know, if it's good, fantastic. But right now, there's just current, there's just too much more that I'm looking forward to than 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 this. I think it's a little weird too that you know. So in Flashpoint, using Affleck again makes sense because they already cast their lot with Ezra Miller, and it's a multiversal movie, right? So yeah. you can kind of mix and match. Bringing him into as a supporting character in a in a film like this feels a little weirder to me. That feels a little more like you are hanging on to the Snyderverse at mm-hmm. some points, but not, mm-hmm. and then letting it go at others. Mm-hmm. So I actually, as weird as it may sound, given we have Batman floating around everywhere, I almost feel like this movie would be better served if they just had, if it wasn't going to be Pattinson, which it kind of can't be because J.K. Simmons is in this. Yeah. Get someone else to do it. Honestly, I think it'll be confusing if we see Batman, if we see Ben Affleck as his Batman in the Zack Snyder costume in this show. I think it's going to feel weird. Yeah, because the rest I, of the show is not Snyderverse. Yeah, this is all, man. This is all to get people to subscribe to HBO Max. This is nothing more than a ploy to get people to sign on. Oh, that's and, true. And, and, I, I, there's no. There's no future here. If there was, we would have seen this on, on film. Movies are coming back. Movies are making somewhat of a, you know, making a comeback. And if this was something worthwhile, why not put it in, 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 in theaters? This is, this is just to get subscribers. There's nothing more than that. Um, and that's how I see it. And because it's free, I'll, not free, I'm paying for the service, but I'm not going to movie theaters and spending a bunch more money in concessions just to watch a, a movie that I'm not very interested in. So. Do you think Brendan Fraser can pull off a mob, a mob kingpin? That's what I'm curious about. That's what I'm more curious about seeing, more interested in seeing, seeing his performance. Um, not necessarily Batgirl, and nothing against Leslie Grace or uh, or Batgirl. I just have a thing about you know seeing these characters to see where they get their inspiration from, and their inspiration has to be Batman. 
and how they go about it is very key. If they totally ignore it and it's something that she just wants to do. I mean, in the comics, this is something that she wants to do on her own. Right. Um, Let's see what it is, man. Let's see what it is. There's just too many variables in there that I, that I think are important that are probably not going to have as much weight as I, as, as I think it should. And I'm just not too interested in seeing that. I'm just interested in seeing a few aspects of it, but nothing more than that. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, next up in our final topic. Um, Ruby Rose has come out and said a number, a, a lot of things regarding her experience on the Batwoman show, which I'm surprised that it's still on. Uh, I don't know if you've watched it. Yeah, nope. me, me neither. No interest. I saw in her. I saw her appearance in sort of the Flash Arrowverse where they kind of revert, you know, the backdoor pilot. Mm -hmm. I watched her, I watched her debut as that. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. And what did you think? I didn't, I didn't see it. I gave up on Flash a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, it was okay for the, the universe that they were in, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a little bit of a different take, obviously, on the Batman esque character, but, you know, did I see six or seven seasons out of that? No. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I think they made it to three, obviously, with the recasting, but, you know. I think after one or two, they were done. Or she was done. Well, she was done after one. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was done after one. Yes, yes, yes. Um, So she's saying that she was treated horribly. It was toxic on set. Um, There was a lot of bad behavior, and the current cast of the Batwoman have sort of denied her claim and saying that she was the one that was causing a lot of that toxicity that she mentioned and that she was sort of like a dictator and treating people like trash or whatever the case may be. But when, when she first left, I I knew there was something up there. I felt like yeah, I agree. when she left, I felt like she didn't really want to do it. I think she did it because it was a job. Um, but it was something that she really didn't want to do. And instead of, I guess they probably agreed, instead of saying that she's fired, they, they sort of agreed, hey, just say that you left that because of whatever. But there was always something behind that. I always questioned that move on her part. Um, I just knew that wasn't going to, it wasn't going to be successful. And now to hear, I don't know whether to believe her or the cast members. I mean, the majority of those say that she was the one that was sort of not treating people well, which you sort of, you know, multiple people are saying this. You're the only one that's saying what you're saying, but multiple people are saying that you are the, the problem. So you can interpret that how you how you may, but it was it was obvious to me that when she left, she, it was something that she really didn't want to do. Um, she was, you know, probably working more than she is norm normally um, accustomed to, and she's used to working with big actors. I mean, she I, I think she just got finished doing John Wick, right? Mm -hmm. And to go to Batwoman, that's not good. <laughs> she was so, in Orange of the New Black, too. Yeah, she was in Orange of the New Black. So she had done some stuff, but this, I think, was a downgrade for her. And I think she probably got caught up in the superhero thing and the, the success of Arrow, the Flash, and probably thought that this might be a good move for her. And while she was doing and probably hearing... Um, fans' reaction and people not really being interested in this film, she said, you know, I'm out. Your thoughts? Well, you know, you hit on the key, you know, the key side by side, because when you see when you see her laundry list, it's hard not to think of Ray Fisher and, and the set of Justice League and how he felt he was treated by the studio and Joss Whedon and, and so forth. But you hit on the key difference, which is, you know, the cast of Justice League 
took up for Ray Fisher. Oh, yeah. There They're was still no dissenting opinions. <laughs> exactly. So, and now, you know, obviously, I think even more recently, like, Gal Gadot's been much more public about what yes. Joss Whedon said and how it was handled. So, you know, as as brazen as Ray Fisher's allegations were and how kind of he kept after the studio, like there, there wasn't that like in-house opposite voice saying he was wrong. It was more yeah. what exactly did go down. So here you're right. It's definitely like the one former star versus the rest of the crew. Now, I guess part of the crux of her claim it's hard to verify is that she had to have surgery at one point and was forced yes. to work and do stunts again like days after the procedure when she wasn't mm -hmm. healthy. Um, but then she kind of went specific after one of, you know, Hugh Gray Scott, one of the co-stars, um, you know, called him out by name for his treatment and the you know, studio took up for him. And then you're right, the other cast members kind of were like, well, she was the diva. You know, all of which kind of brings me back to the question you raised at the start is why is this show still around? <laughs> Is it really worth it? I mean, no. you know, because, you know, however you look at it, like WB, right? This is because of the Justice League fallout. Mm -hmm. They didn't need another show and another set where these kind of similar type situations are happening. Yeah. Even if it were true or not true, yeah. it's bad pub and bad headlines. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you're doing the Batgirl movie. You got a lot of Batman stuff coming on HBO Max and the Batman's in the big screen. Like, do you really need this show? Like, yeah. is this show that essential? Yeah. Or is it like, you know, you kind of just, you could just make it all go away with that. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe she's looking to get paid and that's really what this is about. But who knows? I, it's, you know. So you wouldn't be surprised if she uh, comes up with a lawsuit. I mean, as I said, I mean, I think well, certainly if the if the if the injury thing is right, I would think she would be prepped. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah. That sounds yeah, like yeah. that sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen. Yeah, if yeah, true. yeah, yeah. I mean, but if that was the case, then that would have happened a long time ago. Well, that's the other thing too. So the other subplot to this that makes it weird on the timing is that she was also quoted a couple of months ago as someone asked her about coming back to the show in like a guest role, and she's like, "Well, I'd love to go back if they would have me." Mm. Well, I don't know how you say that, like. Six months ago, and then now you're going in like this, this. Yeah, on, yeah. on everyone across the board. So, yeah, it seems like Ruby Rose is going to have a tough time. I don't know. I got to check out on IMDb and see what she's got coming up in her slate of, of, of roles. Because I know Ray Fishers was pretty empty. I think he had like one or two that were that he was supposed to be in. But there's that one TV role that's coming, one TV lead role that's coming up. Um, I forget what network that's on or what, what service that's on, but yeah, he, he really hadn't done anything. Yeah, and I think I, I think she'll probably have some trouble getting work now. I, I let's see, but hey, the DC world has a lot of issues. Um, you see one shining light. And only one, in my opinion, which is the Batman. The others is a wait and see sort of situation. I don't care how excited you are for Black Adam. I don't care how excited you are for Shazam. Those are going to be whatever. We, there's still a wait and see situation. With the Batman, there is genuine excitement. You can't compare the excitement that you have for the Batman and put him on the same pedestal as Black Adam. They're two different situations. You yeah, know? we don't we don't even talk about it's funny, like we don't even talk about Titans. That show is so far off the rails, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't yeah, even know I, what to say I, about it. Yeah, I I, I've, I I think I watched the first few and then like I, I was just not I'm just not interested. Yeah. So the other the other funny thing I just want to I hadn't mm -hmm. thought about Do Gray Scott in years. Who exactly <laughs> Do Gray Scott, but he is the other half of one of the greatest sliding door moments in comic book genre history. So in 2000, Dugray Scott was coming off being the villain in Mission Possible 2. He was up and coming. He was hot. He was offered a little role 
in, in a movie called X Men as Wolverine, and he said no. Wow. Before Hugh Jackman took the part. What's his name? I gotta look him up. Exactly. <laughs> You're like, who? <laughs> What's his name? Twenty years ago, that guy had the first crack at being the Wolverine at being Wolverine in X. Do Do Gray Do Gray Scott. Scott, Australian actor as well, just like Hugh. And he said no. I, no. Oh, okay. I know him. He, yeah, he was a mission. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just one of those, like, how the world might be different in a lot of ways. If he had said yes, he had the part. It wasn't like he was in the running. He had the part. And then if, if that doesn't happen, does Hugh Jackman ever get the anything close to the career he wound up having? I think he would have eventually made it, but it would have been a lot slower. Um, but thank God they gave it to you, you know, thank oh, God. That, that, exactly. I mean, there's no way you look at you. I mean, like you can't unsee Hugh Jackman's last 20 years as, as Wolverine, but it's just one of those moments of like fork in the road for the genre. Yeah. So when his name came up, it's funny. I don't watch the show. I didn't even know he was on the show. So when his name came up, I was like, oh, he's on that show. Like he's, he's finally back. He finally made it into the genre as a supporting character. What show? Batwoman. The Batwoman. Oh, really? oh, I think I saw. So I that's who, saw that's who yeah, Ruby yeah, Rose yeah. called out as being abusive ah, among her co-stars. So okay. when I saw his name, I was like, oh, he finally did a comic book character 20 years after saying no to Wolverine. I didn't know that. but Interesting. I'm telling you, behind the scenes stuff is crazy. I would, I would, I would ask everyone to, if you haven't seen on Netflix the movies that made us, you should definitely check check that stuff out because uh, what it takes to get these movies done is, is just I don't know if I could handle that sort of stress and pressure that um, that's put upon these individuals to make these films and make it work within a certain time frame with certain amount of money and they're able to put it off. It's, it's, it's just crazy. It's just amazing to me. But yeah, that's our show for the day. Brian, any last words? No, I mean, I think, you know, next, next, I'm trying to think next time we'll probably do one more show before Eternals actually comes out. Yeah. Um, and then we'll kind of probably maybe do an Eternals reaction show. But I mean, this, that, that has taken a left turn. I'm still processing. I never anticipated the reviews would be what they are. So it's, Definitely yeah. I'm trying to sort out exactly where my bar is for this film going in now. I think I still have it pretty high only because of the mythology. I like that sort of stuff. I do too. I do too. And, and so that being of that being sort of the, the key to the future is interesting to me. And I'm looking forward to seeing it. And so far from what I've seen in trailers and new, you know, I try to look away, but it's just right there. Every time they, you know, they show these featurettes and, they sh and it's like, you see it and you just can't take your eyes off of it. But I I'm looking forward to seeing what they have to, to show us. And, um, I, and I can't wait. I can't wait. You know, not, Hey, not everybody liked the equilibrium. I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of movies out there that, you're like, damn, this movie I thought was dope, but nobody <laughs> seemed to like it. And that's cool. Yeah, everybody has their, their different opinions, but it is what it is. But that's our show for today, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, please hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share with your friends. It really does help support the channel. And we really do appreciate it if you guys uh, stick with us throughout this hour and a half. I'm going to try to break these things up and show, because I don't think people that rock. Um, a segment that we had was very good and i think i might have to just uh make a separate video and post that and post that because that was a very interesting conversation because there's a lot of rock fans and i'm pretty sure we'll get a lot of heat <laughs> put it right next well, to your spider-man 3 is gonna be horrible oh but... yeah i think yeah i think i think i might have to do that hey it is what it is, but yeah. we'll see you next time on the next on the Nerd Gym Report.